In all of recorded history, over 330 people died on Mount Everest. This figure continues to grow as, despite the staggering fatality count, mountaineers still ascend the world's highest peak, risking their lives in the process. On average, three to five rock climbers die there every year. And in 2023, Mount Everest took the lives of a record number of people, 17. So what motivates those who go there to meet certain death every year? As always, viewer discretion is advised. Climbing Mount Everest is a serious challenge that requires significant high altitude mountaineering skills and a good general fitness level. But sometimes the impossible dream can cloud the person's judgment making them overestimate their capabilities. Moreover, Everest climbs have recently stopped being seen as something reserved for self-reliant professional mountaineers, all because of expedition companies that claim that their Sherpas will lead you step by step to the summit, even if you don't have enough mountain climbing experience. As if it wasn't an extreme sport, but some kind of scout camp. One such ad was spotted by a 59-year-old Indian teacher, Suzanne Leopoldina Jesus, the woman worked at a Silva Sub public school and led a perfectly average life. This made Suzanne miserable. She wanted to express herself somehow, to do something that was unlike herself, something that would make everyone talk about her. And then Suzanne decided to become the first Asian woman to summit Mount Everest. Here, it's worth to mention the world famous mountaineer, Francis Yarbo Di Stefano Yersintiev, who went down in history as the first American woman to ski down Mount Elbrus. The woman had considerable mountaineering experience and wanted to conquer Mount Everest in 1998. Yet, sadly, due to the ruthless weather conditions on the slope, she died during her descent from the summit. All of this happened despite Francis being a professional. Nevertheless, ignoring such stories, Suzanne continued on the way to her dream. First, she went on acclimation trips. They are necessary to allow your body to adapt to low temperatures and drastic altitude changes. All of this helps to prepare the mountaineer and keeps mountain sickness at bay. This condition is caused by insufficient oxygen saturation at great altitudes. In severe cases, swelling may form in the lungs or the brain, and if no help is administered immediately, the person dies. That's why Sherpas take groups of people on hikes not far from base camps, increasing the altitude each time. During the hikes, Sherpas keep an eye on their client's physical condition and monitor whether they're really ready to continue the ascent. And although all Sherpas are interested in as many people as possible reaching the summit and staying satisfied with the experience, they put serious effort into talking Suzanne out of this idea. During the acclimation trip, the entire team was behind the planned deadline precisely because of Suzanne. It took her five full hours to pass through Crompton Point, a place 250 meters above the Everest base camp. Do you know how long it takes the average mountaineer to pass it? 20 minutes. Unwilling to give up, Suzanne tried to conquer this path a few days later, but this time she spent six hours. Then the Sherpas told the woman their verdict. She wasn't ready to summit Mount Everest. Yet she wouldn't budge and resumed her ascent after the third acclimatization trip. Suzanne made the group spend 12 hours to reach Crompton Point, six hours longer than the time before. Not only did Suzanne not make progress, she made it clear that she needed to be stopped. Later, the situation got even worse. The ascent was planned to allow the tourists to reach the summit before sunset and make it to the camp on time. The weather on Mount Everest is brutal, so mountaineers usually wait for a good weather window to climb to the next camp or conquer the summit, and the time of the ascent is highly regulated. So, Suzanne was endangering not just herself, but the entire group. Apart from that, she started feeling unwell, and with every attempt at continuing the ascent, her state kept deteriorating. When Suzanne barely managed to walk the path, which led to an altitude of 500 meters over the base camp, she was in a terrible state. Then her Sherpa lost it and called a helicopter to evacuate the woman. But when it arrived, Suzanne continued resisting, so she had to be taken away against her will. The woman was taken to the medics, who spent the whole night trying to help her. But in the morning, Suzanne died. As you can see, falling off a cliff or getting buried by an avalanche are not the only things that can kill a person during Mount Everest ascent. We can't underestimate mountain sickness, which took the lives of not only Suzanne, but dozens of other mountaineers. Mountain sickness is very insidious since it's easy to miss. You experience fatigue, weakness, and headache, and then think, this must be normal, I'm climbing friggin' Mount Everest, of course I'm struggling. 
but these are actually the first signs which you'd better not ignore. Later, these symptoms are joined by dizziness, vomiting, pain in the eyes, or even bleeding into the retina, and bradycardia, an abnormally low heartbeat rate. Among the factors that may provoke the condition are gaining too much altitude too fast, sleep deprivation, hypothermia, poor diet, psycho-emotional exhaustion, and even alcohol or caffeine in the bloodstream. But the main reason is that the higher up you go, the less oxygen there is to ensure the normal functioning of the brain and the heart. That's why, most often, the sickness is most dangerous in people who've reached Mount Everest's death zone. This term pertains to the altitudes where oxygen concentration is insufficient to sustain human life for a long time. Typically, the edge of the zone is drawn at an altitude of 8,000 meters. So, if you feel unwell when approaching this height, the best decision would be to return to the nearest camp. Nevertheless, a lot of mountaineers ignore these symptoms, thus putting their own lives in danger. And not everyone gets away with it. This was experienced firsthand by a Malaysian mountaineer, Ug Askander Ben Umpun Yuku. He was 55 years old and worked as a police officer. Compared to Suzanne, Yakub had a more dynamic lifestyle. He loved extreme sports such as diving and parachute jumping. But was this enough for climbing Mount Everest? No, since these are completely different things. And Yakub made sure of it when he tried to conquer this mountain for the first time but never managed to reach the summit. Yet, the man decided to try again. During acclimation trips, the Sherpas noticed he wasn't the fastest member of the group, but he did quite all right. On May 15th, Yakub's group started the ascent. The man held up fairly well, although his breath was becoming increasingly heavy, and Yakub was increasingly lethargic. Closer to the death zone, he had to take more and more resting stops. But no one paid attention to that, since even professionals don't feel too well at such altitudes. But on May 20th, when the group reached the death zone, Yakub was unable to keep walking. Then, it became clear that something was wrong with him, and he was likely suffering from mountain sickness. Yet, to save a person with this condition, their companions must take them to the lowest possible altitude as quickly as possible. It was a race against time. The Sherpas carried the man down as fast as they could, but it was difficult. They kept track of his condition every few minutes, but Yakub eventually stopped responding. The Sherpas checked his pulse and saw that the man was no longer alive. When it became clear nothing else could be done for Yakub, the guides left his body somewhere in the area of South Coal and returned to the group to help the other ascent participants and not put them in danger as well. The following day, Yakub's body was picked up and sent to his family in Malaysia. Yet, such a reaction to the harsh conditions of Mount Everest may arise not exclusively in newbie mountaineers, but also in professionals. Viorika, the wife of a Moldovan mountaineer, Victor Brinza, says that her husband loved mountains and heights in general. He even worked as a TV antenna installer precisely because he loved watching the world from above. Victor had already conquered all of Italy's summits, but his greatest dream was Mount Everest. The mountaineer started his expedition across the South Coal, where Yakub had died. But the wind, which was incredibly strong that day, stopped him from reaching the summit. So he had to stop for the night to continue on his way in the morning. But at night, due to mountain sickness, his state deteriorated so much that he didn't last until morning. Victor Brinza died on Mount Everest on May 17th. Viorica says he was brave and an adventurous spirit and died doing his favorite thing in the world. Another person who dreamed of conquering Mount Everest since he was nine years old was Peter Swart, an anesthesiologist from a Vancouver hospital. He had summited an incredible number of mountains, from Mount Rainier in North America to Aconcagua in Argentina. And in May of 2023, he started his coveted Mount Everest ascent. As of May 25th, he had been on the mountain for seven weeks. And before that day, he had kept in constant touch with his family. Judging from his words, Peter was feeling great, but everything changed in the death zone. The man started feeling extremely unwell. He couldn't even get up on his feet by himself, let alone continue walking. He had a splitting headache. His breathing was uneven, and it was very hard for him to concentrate. The closest camp was the fourth, but Peter's condition was so poor that he had to be immediately taken as low as the third, because only that camp had the landing ground for a helicopter that would be able to take the victim straight to the hospital. But on his way to the camp, Peter's condition became even worse. He passed out and even had a cardiac arrest. Peter took his last breath even before being administered medical help. Sadly, the Sherpas didn't manage to get him to the camp in time, 
Although guides go up Mount Everest and back countless times, this doesn't mean they're capable of dealing with all critical situations that arise on the slope. Even they are not immune to death. On the morning of April 12, 2023, before sunrise, three Sherpas, Lukpa Rata, Pemba Tenji, and Da Chiri set out for the Kumbu Icefall. All of them had summited Mount Everest multiple times, and on that day, they were supposed to check and replace some ropes that were joining Camp 2 at an altitude of 6,400 meters and the summit. The task was very important since the ropes were used to secure the mountaineers during ascent on difficult and steep routes. They were installed in the areas near ravines or cliffs, and the Kumbu Icefall was one of them. It's a part of an iceberg with multiple cracks. It is in constant movement, causing collapses, but everyone summiting Mount Everest from the southern side has to pass through it, since it's the only path to Camp 1. To do maintenance work, the Sherpas had to cross the icefall right at its center, and this area is one of the most dangerous zones. At 9.30 a.m., something likely happened at the icefall because there was a message about an accident from a group of mountaineers. As it turned out, another collapse happened at Kumbu, which caused the Sherpas to fall into the 50-meter deep crack. In addition, they were buried under an avalanche. Ground rescue operations started immediately after the alerts came in. The efforts were assisted by air search, but the rescue mission was stopped due to the deteriorating weather and the risk of another avalanche. Sadly, all three Sherpas were buried alive under the snow, and none of them survived. No matter how advanced your mountaineering skills might be, everyone is equally helpless in the face of dangerous elements. Whether you're a beginner, a Sherpa, or a famous mountain climber, like Selard Shoaida. In 2014, he conquered Broad Peak, which reaches 8,051 meters. And in 2022, he summited Lhotse, an even higher mountain standing at 8,516 meters. After this, in 2023, Selard got his sights set on Mount Everest, and he wanted to conquer it by himself, without anyone's help. He turned his Facebook page into a sort of journal where he recorded his impressions. In one of his last posts, he wrote that for the past few days, he'd been suffering from a severe cough and a sore throat, and his eyes had been watering. Yet, despite all this, he was doing everything he could to get better and reach the summit and he was pretty close to the top. Selard told his family over the satellite phone that he was at an altitude of approximately 8,700 meters, and he had around three or four hours left to the summit. The last signal received from his tracker was at a height of the Hillary Step, a steep, almost vertical slope of Mount Everest, the last place from which the man's whereabouts could still be tracked. Then his family raised an alarm, and after a long search, there was news that another expedition group had found him on that same step at an altitude of 8,780 meters, but they were unable to help him. Nevertheless, they contacted a Nepal agency, which sent a helicopter in search of Shuhaida. Also, on May 26th, three Sherpas set out from Camp 2 to help the victim. It was two days after Selard attempted to reach the summit, and one day after he was last seen alive. When the team arrived at the Mountaineer's last known location, he wasn't there. They spent the entire day searching for the man and even reached the very top of the mountain. But eventually, Shuhaida was pronounced dead, although his body hadn't been found. In the end, it turned out that on May 24th, Shuhaida resumed his ascent without his gear. His clothes and tent were found by a Sherpa near Camp 2. This evidence pointed to him climbing the mountain with nothing but the clothes he had on not even with extra oxygen that could have saved his life in the death zone. This tragedy became the most mysterious one to have happened in 2023. So it doesn't matter if you've decided to conquer Mount Everest because it's your unfulfilled dream. If you're just curious, or if it's your job, you can die in any of these cases. This mountain is merciless even to those who have the noblest of causes. In May of the current year, an Australian man named Jason Kennison tried to climb Mount Everest. He wasn't a Sherpa or a professional mountaineer. He was just doing it for charity. At the age of 23, Kennison had a car accident, which caused him serious injuries to the hip, the shoulder, and the spine. His rehabilitation was slow. Jason had to restore the functionality of his limbs, relearn how to walk, and battle depression, which developed along the way. Yet even after recovery, the man suffered from persistent pain in the back, so he had to undergo a routine spine surgery and fate threw him another curveball. During the operation, Jason's nerve was injured, after which doctors predicted a life bound to the wheelchair for him. 
yet Kennison passionately dove back into rehabilitation and physiotherapy. Eventually, the man could not only stand on his feet, but also walk and run. He even planned an Everest ascent. In this way, Jason wanted to draw attention to the people who were suffering and needing help, just like him. So, with his ascent, he was planning to encourage people to finance a charity named Spinal Cord Injury Australia. Before the ascent, Kennison went to New Zealand to take a mountaineering course. He also practiced rock climbing and organized training in his backyard with step climbing and jumaring, climbing up a rope installed in one place. So, upon arriving at Mount Everest itself, Jason's success was great. He was very skilled and persistent and dealt with all hurdles just as well as the two Sherpas who accompanied him. Eventually, he reached the world's tallest summit, although he couldn't have dreamt about even standing on his own two feet a few years before. In an interview, his family members recall crying from happiness as they found out Jason had made it because they knew how important it was for him. Kennison took a photo of his triumph, but it wasn't victory yet. He was halfway there since he still had to come back down from the mountain. Euphoric, Jason didn't pay attention to it being increasingly hard for him to breathe. The feeling of dizziness and his strength leaving him, which made forward movement difficult. The Sherpas immediately understood that something was wrong with the man and that he was probably suffering from mountain sickness. They helped Kennison come down to a mountain ledge situated at about 8,400 meters above sea level and descended to Camp 4 to take tanks with extra oxygen for Jason and themselves since they were running out of what they had. But the strong wind and the bad weather stopped the guides from returning to the victim immediately. At that moment, Jason was suffering from obstructed breathing and the cruel cold, which, sadly, he failed to overcome. The Kennison family was informed that he died of high-altitude brain swelling. Jason's loved ones were devastated by their loss, and their only solace was this photo he'd made by the summit. According to them, it captured the happiest smile they'd ever seen on his face in his life. The news of the Australian daredevil's death quickly spread across the media, along with his life story and the mention of his desire to help the Spinal Cord Injury Australia charity, and this was what he wanted to achieve the most. In 2023, the world's tallest mountain was conquered by around 600 people. 350 of them were Sherpas. Overall, Mount Everest was crowded by 9 to 1,200 mountaineers. Base camp employees say this season was particularly difficult due to vast numbers of people. They had to administer medical aid to approximately 600 thrill seekers. Their medical problems encompassed everything from respiratory issues and viral infections to high altitude lung swelling, which happened in 50% of all cases. Would you risk conquering Mount Everest even if you knew you definitely wouldn't die? Or perhaps you already have such experiences? Write your answers in the comments and subscribe to the channel. Here, you'll learn about the most horrifying and unexpected things that can happen to you on extreme adventures.